Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us on another interview. Today, we have an amazing guest. We're going to be talking to, I will call him Brother Rob, <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Now, as you know, we are going through all of our tribes. So the people who are tapped in in Tony Gass's Academy, who have gifts, services, companies, I'm taking the time to meet people one by one and introducing them to you. So if this is your first interview that you've seen, make sure you see the ones before this and the ones after this. So thank you so much, Rob. How are you? Man, I'm fantastic, man. This is an awesome thing that you're doing and I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Now, when was it that we intersected online. Like, when did you bump into me online? Yeah, crazy enough, man. Ten, it was ten years ago. So, ten years ago in in twenty fourteen, as you know, I was trying to build my business up and decided that I wanted to launch a podcast. Um, that's when I became, you know, familiar with you and all of the amazing things that you were doing in the community that you were building online. And um, I thought that my audience would benefit from hearing from you. And, and how you were able to do that. And so you were, you know, certainly gracious enough, you know, not knowing me from Adam, but, you know, allowing, uh, you know, me to have you on my podcast. And it was a, a really big thing for me as I started that uh, part of my business. Wow. 10 years. And now, and I know when you signed up for this opportunity, I was like, okay, Rob, I know Rob and I'm reading and refreshing myself. But the podcast had slipped my mind because I mean, it was 10 years ago and I was trying to figure it out. But I'm like, you know, this is rare. I don't always get to meet men who look like me, who have your gifts and your skill set, your knowledge. So, I mean, I'm honored to be able to chat with you. And I want to hear from you now. Where are you from and do you live where you're from? Yeah, so I'm originally from Pittsburgh, you know, born and raised, and I went to the University of Pittsburgh undergrad. I went to Carnegie Mellon for grad school, but I currently live in Philadelphia. So, you know, I've been married for eight years now, and shortly before I got married, I moved out here to Philly. Okay, so married for eight years, Philly. Now, Philly is just like with any city, we only get to see what we see on the news, what we hear in the music. So when I think of Philly, I think of the the guys riding the bikes in the the dirt bikes in the street and For rappers. Sure. A lot of the best rappers come out of Philly. Now, is it what we see on TV or is it other sides of Philly? Is is it is it rough and tough? Is it separated? <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I would say you know, it's some of what you see on TV for sure, but there's a lot more to the city than that. You know, we live right downtown in Center City, Philadelphia. And so a lot of the more negative things, you know, that you probably see in the news, you know, we don't necessarily feel or deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Although, you know, there are those things that do go on uh, in other parts of the city. So, you know, as you said, with any area that you live in, there's good, there's bad, there's there's certainly bad areas here. But there's a lot going on. There's a lot of business to be done, a lot of connections to be made. And um, I would say it's been fruitful for, for myself and my wife as long as we've been here. That's amazing. I remember coming through Philly, I think, for a book signing. I think I did a speaking engagement there. And I did one of y'all's news stations there. And so I really like Philly itself. And I got to come back now that I know you're there. I got a reason to come visit, you know, for check sure. things out. So now, what is it that you do? Like, what is your skill set, gift, passion? What are you working on? Yeah, so I'm a financial advisor and, you know, I'm coming up close to, you know, having been in this business for 20 years. And, you know, I really got passionate about it. You know, my undergraduate degree is in engineering. And so it wasn't necessarily a straight path to what I'm doing now. Although I tell people that I will always be an engineer I just happen to be doing it in finance now. But, you know, where where I grew up and, and how I grew up, I mean, I didn't come from money. I didn't talk about money at the dinner table. But sort of when I was in college and, you know, folks started making all this money in the, in the dot-com boom in the stock market. And I said, listen, I need to understand this. What is going on? What are all these articles 
that I keep reading about everyone making so much money. And so I started to try to educate myself and be more mindful and knowledgeable about finances because, you know, I saw my mother struggle when we were growing up and trying to figure out, you know, this month, which bill am I going to pay and which one am I going to let you know, go into next month. And I knew that I just didn't want to live that way. And so tried to educate myself and then eventually decided to go back to business school. And I focused and concentrated on finance and accounting. And then while I was there in business school, you know, I just wanted to do something more entrepreneurial. Um, I loved being in corporate. I did, I did consulting at Deloitte, you know, one of the largest consulting firms in the world. But I didn't like the aspect of having to wait for someone else to tell me they were ready for me to make more money or be promoted or have a bigger title. And so I wanted to be in a situation where if I wanted to make more money, I need to find more clients myself. And I was okay with that. And so for me, what I thought the best of both worlds was going and being a financial advisor, because I thought that I could do well for myself and my family, but I could also do good for other people at the same time in terms of acquiring this knowledge and then bringing it back to people who might not necessarily have access to it. And so it's been, a, it's been a great ride. I've been doing it for 20 years. I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of professional athletes, entertainers, notable individuals. And um, that's what I'm passionate about, making sure that people can live the financial life that they truly desire and deserve. Mm. Now, when it comes to the financial advisor situation is it one size fits all or is it levels to it you know how we have bachelor's master's degree you know doctorate like with financial advisor to have that title can you have the title and not be like licensed and certified or and be like a financial advisor or is it something that you have to do as far as a test or something yeah, you definitely have to be licensed if you're going to be out in the public and accepting compensation uh, for giving financial advice. And so, yeah, I've had to take, you know, my tests, I've had to get licensed and all of those sorts of things. And that's a part of, you know, keeping the public safe when you're sharing all of this sensitive information in such an important part of your life. So, yeah, you want to make sure anytime you're dealing with someone with regards to your finances that they are properly uh, licensed and, um, you know, hopefully have the experience to handle the specific problems that you're dealing with. And is it by state or is it just a, a one test for the whole country? Yeah. So depending on the size of the advisor, you can be licensed just uh, within your state. But then as you get bigger and get more clients and more assets under management and you deal with clients in different locales, then the necessity does become for you to either get licensed in additional states or if you're if you're big enough, then you would just get licensed with the SEC, which is more of a national type of uh, registration. Mm -hmm. And what route did you decide to do? So when I first started my financial part of my career after I finished business school, I went to go work for Smith Barney, which at that time was a part of Citigroup, you know, again, one of the largest financial institutions in the world. And so um, at that time, I got uh, registered uh, with all of the states that I was going to be, you know, doing business with. But because you're at you're with such a large advisor, you're also sort of registered with the with the SEC. Now, as I progressively decided to go on my own, you know, in 2009, right in the middle of the financial crisis, I left Smith Barney, started a company with a partner that I had met there. He and I worked together for about five years. And then 2014, uh, I decided to go completely solo. And so because I wasn't attached to this huge organization as I was before, um, then I just started getting registered with each individual state uh, that I was going to be doing business in. But eventually, as we continue to grow, you know, I can see us having to uh, register with the SEC again. And registering with the SEC, I'm, I'm guessing it's a tall order. Like, is it a lot of money or is it really hard? Well, you know, some people may find the exam hard. Um, you know, there are folks who you probably have had to take it multiple times or, or maybe didn't pass it. I mean, I was fortunate coming out of business school. I had a lot of that knowledge. I mean, you have you do have some people sort of walking off the street and they were, you know, working in a restaurant last week. And then now they want to be a financial advisor for, for some of those folks. It may be a little bit more difficult. But um, while I would say, you know, the, the exam is serious and it's challenging, 
Um, I didn't have any trouble passing, you know, those exams. But, you know, there there is a bar that you really need to be ingrained in in the financial industry and understand what you're talking about, especially if you're going to be given this uh, type of advice. So it's not, you know, overly expensive, although there are fees to get registered with the SEC or the state. But, um, you know, it's it's something that you have to deal with if you want to be serious about being in the business. And now for you to get registered with the SEC, you personally, do you have to just go pay a fee or do you have to take another test? So I don't think I would have to take another test if I want to um, expand my uh, registration to the SEC because I'm already have passed the exams and am licensed at the at the state level. But if you're just going straight for that, you know, registration, yes, you would have to pass your licenses. So you may need to take what's called the Series Seven um, if you're going to be uh, sort of selling commission based products. I don't do that anymore. I really do two things really well. I do comprehensive financial planning, and I manage investment portfolios. So I'm registered as what's called a registered investment advisor, which meant I needed to pass my Series 65 exam. Mm, I see. Now, and here's the thing, because you're in an industry that, for one, I, I love it, I admire it, and I also fear it because of, you know, it's good and bad and everything. And one of my favorite shows is American Greed. And on American Greed, I think it's on MSNBC, you have those guys, they're not financial advisors, but it's just different industries where they raise a bunch of money or, you know, they, they sell something and then they go crooked. And then we have the docu-series or the documentary Broke, where all the athletes were like, they were sending their tax check to their financial advisor. And instead of the financial advisor sending it to the IRS, he was spending it. And then they owe all these back taxes. And next thing you know, they flat broke, filing bankruptcy. So you're in a space to where you can... I, and I'm going to say this and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you can live a comfortable life and earn a good living if you just do things honestly and you won't have anything to worry about. And then you also can, you know, bite the apple or take the pill and get over on people for their lack of knowledge, become filthy rich and then have to go to prison. And it's just red pill, blue pill, it seems. So what for you have you done to kind of insulate yourself from the wrong influences or the wrong people and to still be free 20 years in the game? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it, it's really unfortunate to hear a lot of those stories. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to get into this industry and why I wanted to work with pro athletes and entertainers, because you hear story after story you know, of these, you know, mostly guys, but also, you know, women as well, just getting taken advantage of because they went from eating ramen noodles one day to, you know, filet mignon the next, and but didn't grow up with the knowledge and the information on how to manage their finances. And so the biggest thing for me is that I would tell them, yes, I want you to trust uh, and have faith in me that I know what I'm doing and that I'm going to give you the best advice that I possibly can. But whether it's with me or whether it's with another another advisor, it's still your money and it's important and you have to treat it as such. And so it's really trust, but verify. And so a lot of these, you know, gentlemen, they will just give their advisor, you know, total, total carte blanche to handle their finances. And what a lot of those guys would say is, listen, you just handle, you know, what you have to do on the field or the court. I'll handle the rest which sounds good, but it leads to a lot of these bad situations that you were talking about. So you always need to make sure that you're getting your account statements directly from the financial institution, not some statements that, you know, Bernie Madoff made up, you know, in his office, you know, one night. Um, you need to make sure that you're getting alerts. You need to make sure that nobody can make transfers or, or do wires out of your account without your approval. You, you need to make sure that you have these um, checks and balances in place. And, and by the way, you might actually want to have more than one advisor because now you have checks and balances. You got one advisor looking at what the other's doing, and it's going to be a lot harder for someone to, 
you know, pull the wool over your eyes if someone who's also well versed in the industry is a part of the situation. So there are definitely things, you know, that you can do. But as as far as I'm concerned, listen, I, I know that the only thing that I have, the only currency that I have in this business is my integrity. And once you lose that, you might as well go do something else, you know, as a career. And so I've I've gone to great lengths, you know, to protect my name, to protect my integrity. And, uh, you know, it's it seemed to have worked for the last 20 years. That's amazing. And and that is and I wanted to ask you that tough question, because that's always the elephant in the room. But the advice you gave, that lets me know that you're serious about this. And it's, it's also the first time I've heard somebody say you may want to have more than one advisor because I have been working with pro athletes since. 2010 and on the NBA I probably have given a speech to over 400 NBA players and a large group of them I've talked to personally and I know them and I've never heard of one of them having more than one advisor and I think that's the greatest advice I've heard in that area but also Ironically, I've been meeting people in these interviews that that I need in my life. And so my wife and I, we're starting a sports agency, Gaskin Sports Group, where we're going to be you know, managing athletes and helping the college guys with their NIL, the name, image, likeness, for those of you who don't know about that, where they get the brand deals. And then also helping the pro guys, which I'm helping – Pro guys now start their LLC, start their nonprofit organization, build their website, more hands on. Mm -hmm. And I think we may need to talk, Rob, about maybe having you as a consultant, you know, a partner with our agency as the financial advisor, because my wife and I, we don't do financial advising. And I always see just a certain prototype of a financial advisor and i have not i don't think i've met any that look like you and so i like that because it's it's different it's diversity and it also shows you know it, it breaks the mold and it creates representation and it shows that hey all of the financial advisors don't look like this you know, this ain't the only type of person that can become a financial advisor. And the financial advisors who look like Rob are not all crooks. And so that's the beauty of it. So I, I love what you do now for the general public, like who we're talking to, who aren't necessarily pro athletes. What services do you provide? Yeah. So the comprehensive financial planning that I do, I really came out with that service specifically because I was coming into contact with people like you're, you're referencing here, you know, upwardly mobile, you know, newly sort of emerging affluent, you know, kind of making money, not necessarily with a big portfolio that they could have me manage today, but they definitely needed advice on how do I get my money in order? What are the important things that I need to be thinking about. Where should I have my accounts? What interest rate should I be expecting on my savings and checking? How do I start investing? Because I've never even talked about it before and I'm afraid to put my money to work and lose it. Um, what are some of the other things that I don't even know about that I should be thinking about with regards to my finances? And, and one of the most important things as far as that goes, Tony, is, is the estate planning, which most of us, not just, you know, folks that look like us, but most people don't take the time to actually have their affairs in order. And I've seen families literally, you know, torn apart over what, what some might consider not a, a really big amount of money. And so not having a will and a power of attorney and a health care directive and maybe even going down the road of having a trust, not having those things in place. Look, I, when I talk to people every day, I know that they care about their families. I, I can see it. I, I can feel it, how much they care about their, their loved ones. But I tell them that their love for them is incomplete if you don't have your affairs in order because you are completely leaving them to have to deal with 
not only losing you, but the financial ramifications that come from that if you're if you don't have insurance and you don't have your documents in order. And so getting that financial planning done, getting all of your ducks in a row and really understanding what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Tony, a lot of uh, people are just walking through life with no direction. They don't know how much money they need to save for retirement. They don't know how much money they want to have by the time they retire. And look, the GPS in your car and on your phone is a great tool, but it can't do anything for you unless you put the destination in there. So we set some really specific goals. We get honest about where they stand today. And if we do that, then we can always reverse engineer what we need to do between now and in the future to make sure that they hit those goals. So the biggest thing that I can offer for folks like that is, is, is really getting serious about financial planning. Mm, that's good. And now this is just for everyday people who they can come to you and talk to you about, hey, I need this right here. I want to have put up when I retire at 65 or 62, and I want to have this amount of insurance and when I pass away to go to my kids, they can come to you and talk to you about that. Oh, ab absolutely. I'm doing that every day, you okay. know, right now for my clients. And, and the best thing about that, in my opinion, is, you know, you talked about the different types of financial advisors. The way I've structured my business now, I don't sell any products. You know, I don't sell insurance. I don't sell annuities. I'm not trying to schlep, you know, any of these products, you know, at the folks that I'm talking to. What I'm trying to do is to give you the best advice on how to structure everything. And then, sure, maybe I can refer you to someone who actually sells those products once you decide that, yes, that's the right thing for you. But there's no pressure to, to try to buy a lot of, of products. There are a lot of folks who say they are, quote unquote, financial advisors, but really what they are. Are, are product pushers because I believe you are what you get paid for. And if you work for an insurance company, your job is to sell insurance policies, not necessarily to give your client the best advice that you could possibly give them. So that's why I've structured my business in that way where I don't sell anything. I just do planning and I, and I will manage investment portfolios. Mm, I see. And now managing an investment portfolio, what does that look like? Because me personally, I really don't want nobody moving my money around without my permission or like telling me, and I need to have the same access they have, you know, and be able to see every little thing because I always tell people I work with, I'm not sending you to jail. I'm sending you to your grave. So, <laughs> right. so well, you're messing you to, with people's money. It's serious. Right. You know? And so what does managing a financial portfolio look like? So it works in a lot of the ways that you desire, right? So the, the the customer, the client always has access to their account where they can log in, see exactly what's going on. They're getting statements directly from the custodian, you know, not from me. And they could cut off my access at any point in time, you know, that they desire to do so. But a lot of folks are saying, listen, Rob, you know, I'm good at why I, I do. That's why I've been able to amass these amount of assets. I don't have time to pay attention to the stock market and all of those sorts of things. I want you to do that for me. So I have what's with most of my clients what's called discretion, meaning I can make the decisions on what to buy or what to sell and, and to just report uh, the performance on a, however frequently they would like for me to report, but no um, less frequently than quarterly. Um, so there are a lot of clients who do value that as a service. They don't want to be that hands-on. But there are other clients who are calling me every morning at 930 in the morning when the stock market opens because they want to talk about what's happening and they do kind of want to direct, you know, some of those trades. So anytime I work with someone, I tell them, listen, you're the boss. Um, I'm going to manage this uh, in conjunction with your goals, your risk tolerance, things that you do and or don't want to be involved in. Um, and you can decide to be as involved or hands off as as you desire. Right, I see. I love it. Now, would you be willing to work with a client where you own like a monthly retainer and you say, they say, hey, what system do you want me to use? Vanguard, SoFi, Merrill Lynch, and you tell them the one you recommend, they sign up 
and then they say, I want to invest a hundred dollars a month or 500 a month. And you say, okay, I recommend this, you know, put it in this type of account or ETF or what have you. And then when it's time to sell, you can say, Hey, go in and I recommend you sell this and buy this. What, and you get paid to where they're directing it, but it, it's with your insight and knowledge and they understand the risk that they take in listening to you. They don't have to listen to you if they don't want to. And they pay you a monthly retainer just for that, you know, five, 10 minute conversation a month. Would you be willing to do a system like that? I, I can certainly, you know, absolutely make that work. There, there are some folks where we just have a, a relationship like that, sort of more of a financial coaching relationship where we will touch base, you know, say on a, a you know, every other week or a monthly basis where I can provide that that type of advice. And it is just for, you know, a monthly fee. So certainly, certainly I'm open to that type of arrangement. And the reason why I ask that is because that's my personality. Mm -hmm. And so I ask that for the people like me. And <laughs> yeah. so, but there are most people, I would say 90% of people, they just, they'll turn it over to you and say, hey, you do it. Me personally, I don't trust a human further than I can see a human. You feel me? And uh, I appreciate I can appreciate that. You know, Absolutely. And, and I'm married and I tr trust my wife. You see what I mean? Yeah. I still understand she a human. Mm -hmm. I trust my son. He a human. He's a human. I, you see what I mean? My mom, yeah. my dad, I'm just like that with humans because I see the human flaw, the human error. So I rather have control over my destiny versus someone else. But I also value the knowledge that you have gone and, and got. Right. And what I try to do is teach my client. So I'm your author consultant, but I'm teaching you every step that we're doing on this book. So on book number two, you could do it on your own. And I feel like if we had more servants hearts, more people who are willing to teach Versus just remain the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. We could reach so much further, do so much more. And just that willingness to teach like what you have, that makes people trust you more too. Because it's like, wow, you know what? You're giving me some game. And because you're willing to give this to me and not keep me in the dark, I want to keep you on board. And I want you to eat from this success, you know, that you've helping, that you're helping me accomplish. So I really respect your, you know, approach to it and how you client focused and not just one size fits all. Yeah, because it, it is the people that have sort of some not so good intentions that don't want to teach and don't want to educate, because that's how you can, you know, run circles around people when they don't have the information or knowledge. They don't understand how to evaluate you or what you could potentially do. So, you know, I, I I don't think I'd have been around this long and working with the folks that I've been blessed to work with if I didn't, you know, take time um, and have them understand that I'm okay with teaching you everything that it is, you know, that you want to know so that we're, you know, sort of both on the same level playing field and you can be comfortable with the moves that I'm making and not just think that it's, it's happening in, in some sort of black box somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And, well, Rob, what I want to do is I, I'll get your contact information and whether that's a website, email address, and for everyone watching this, Rob's contact is in the description box. So you can reach out to him, understand that not every service may be for you. Not every service may be affordable or in your budget. He's one man. He has support, but they got a system. So he won't be able to service every need, but he'll be able to point you in the right direction if he can't help you. So understand that because, Rob, what you're doing, you truly are the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. And at this point, you're the two-eyed man in the land of the blind because this stuff is foreign to most people. To, to most people, this financial world, investing, setting yourself up for retirement is foreign. And we just kind of winging it and we guessing and we doing it alone or we trust in our company that we work for to do our pension and 401k the best they can. And then now I've heard some of those are 
Like they're losing the money, like they're closing it. The people don't got a pension anymore after they don't work there for 30 years and just all kind of crazy stuff happening. And so having someone like yourself, I definitely want to work with you with my sports agency and being able to connect my future clients to you so they can interview you and see if they want to hire you. And I believe they will, because a lot of guys, you just don't get a good feeling from them when you talk to them in your space. So I commend you on taking care of yourself, being married, you know, staying focused, just being bright eyed and a good spirit. You know, that that's a great thing because you could come on here and be looking broke, busted and disgusted, disheveled and saying, Hey, let me manage your money. And everybody like, no, you didn't. Mm -hmm. Not but, happening. You know, you represent in the right way. And I appreciate that. And I applaud you for that. And no matter what it takes, no matter what it takes, call me if you need me to stay on that straight and narrow, stay on that straight and narrow. Cause we need you, man. We need you. And you are in a space that is so tough because like the good book says, the love of money. Mm. So when people get mm. that close to it, Yep. They end up falling in love with it. So thank you for what you're doing. And hopefully you don't get too bombarded. <laughs> and, and we'll have to do a part two sometime so we could just do some, some teaching for the people who can't, you know, hire somebody right now. Just do some financial teaching with a financial advisor. Oh, uh, that, that would be incredible. I would love to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And to everybody, make sure that you tune in every week, same day, same time, so you can meet your fellow like-minded individuals making moves and changing the world one life at a time. Thank you so much, and we will talk soon.